Hi everyone, how are you guys doing today? Um, today I'm going to be talking about the hepatic portal vein uh, tributaries. Um, this is going to be the first lecture I'm going to be going over before I move into the pathophysiology of why we are going over this. Uh, I think every student should understand the anatomy at least before they can actually progress to along the pathophysiology of disease processes because it allows you to pre basically appreciate uh, the disease process and be able to actually understand why uh, patients present with their symptoms. So let's begin. So I'm going to basically uh, point out the most important structures. This looks like a busy slide. But overall, I think um, just you just have to know actually very few things. And, and once I go through, you, you get the hang of it by the end of this lecture. So the first thing I want you to notice is the liver. And you can see the liver has uh, like the right lobe and the left lobe right here. Uh, the green is the gallbladder. And uh, I want us to uh, kind of go over the tributaries that leads to the liver uh, by starting from right around the stomach. So usually when you eat food, food basically goes through your esophagus, down all the way into your stomach, goes into your duodenum, all the way down to your jejunum and uh, terminal ileum, which will be right there, uh, where all your digestion is mostly happening, and all the way into the ascending colon, transverse colon, all the way down to your descending colon, and down to your rectum and your anus. So that's kind of like how food normally like passes through your body. But the most important thing about this slide I want you to kind of focus on is actually this little tree looking like uh, kind of bluish purple uh, vein sy venous system. Uh, first, I want you to notice that most of the f uh, digested uh, products, food substances, actually been dumped back from the descending colon to sigmoid and they're basically going all the way through your inferior mesenteric vein. That's all you need to know. This extra stuff, maybe for your anatomy class, sigmoid rectal veins, but for the purpose of this lecture and the clinical application, which we'll talk about in the next lecture, uh, you can see here I highlighted in yellow, the inferior mesenteric vein. Also, I want you to notice that if you trace that, as it's going all the way, it forms a confluence with this vein also draining from your spleen so that's your splenic vein and I just want you to take note of that that's your splenic vein and your inferior mesenteric vein joins together actually to form the splenic vein and you can see it right there so that's an important thing to know this will also join with this big vein which is basically a tributary of different uh, anastomosis but the most important thing you have to know is the superior mesenteric vein. And the superior mesenteric vein and the inferior mesenteric vein, which is actually uh, uh, joining with the splenic vein, as you can see, it drains actually into the splenic vein. Both of them form together to form this hepatic portal vein. That's the most important vein. Um, I think every student I need to know that because when we talk about portal hypertension, this is what we are referring to right here. But I'm not going to go into great detail. We're going to talk about it in the next lecture. So this is the hepatic portal vein. The hepatic portal vein is now going to drain into the liver. And as you can see, it splits up. Now, another important thing I want you to understand is that you can see the middle rectal vein and the inferior rectal veins right here. And this, they, they have um, clinical and uh, um, significance and uh, we'll, we'll talk about them but make sure you understand that as you can see this inferior rectal veins they also drain all the way into your um inferior mesenteric vein eventually so when you get portal hypertension you probably be able to see kind of hemorrhoids forming down here and I'll go over that uh, also in a minute uh, another key important thing you need to understand is as you can see this is your stomach this is the, it has a fundus and uh, has the greater curvature, kind of the lesser curvature right here. I kind of want to drag your attention right here to see that there's this esophageal veins 
they're actually wrapping around your esophagus and they also drain into your left gastric vein which basically form this kind of wire loop and drains also into your part of it also another uh, branch that's coming to drain into your part of the system at this power umbilical band and you can see how they were both draining to your uh, part of it and eventually stuff that goes into your part of the system goes eventually drains into your central vein which eventually exit out through the liver through the hepatic vein which is actually not shown on this picture and that will be draining to your uh, inferior vena caver so in general uh, that's the uh, anatomic uh, relationships I think you should understand because when I talk about portal hypertension in the next video uh, and I'm just going to touch a little bit about it right now, but you'll be able to see me in the next uh, lecture and we'll go into details of the clinical applications you need to watch out for, the signs and symptoms present patients are going to present with, and also uh, the treatment options. But overall, when you get a portal hypertension, you get a backup, right? So imagine if I block flow into the liver, blood start to back up into here and you see this power umbilical veins and they appear in the patient's belly as caput medusa also if they back up all the way into your gastric veins and eventually backs up all the way into esophageal veins if you do an endoscopy you'll be able to see the patient has esophageal varices which are these tortuous dilated veins in the patient another important thing you see is splenomegaly, right? The spleen is not able to basically drain all its byproducts, which are breakdown of red blood cells, uh, uh, bilirubin, and that kind of stuff. Uh, it backs up and the spleen becomes really enlarged. Also, you'll be able to notice that the patient probably will be complaining of hemorrhoids, which should be in these enlarged, tortuous veins. Uh, and they will be telling you, oh, doc, you know, when I poop, it's, I kind of feel like something is bulging in my butt. And that's basically because the inferior rectal veins are all distended and it's kind of like pushing into the um, inner canal. Uh, so those are the basic clinical uh, relationships I want you to know for this for now. Um, we'll go into further details, actually the signs and the symptoms. This is just anatomy, just for you to be able to kind of see how things are, uh, are related. And I think if you just know this, uh, everything else would make a lot more sense when I go into details about uh, what you actually see on the patient, how they present with, and the uh, pathophysiology and uh, the clinical applications. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Please subscribe to my videos, and uh, I'll be coming up with more, more videos uh, as time goes on. Thank you for your time. Take care.